In 1977, the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 space probes set out on their historic interstellar journey about a month apart. Voyager 2 became the first and only spacecraft to sail past the Neptune planet, which orbits the Sun at a 2.7 billion miles away, only five days after its 12th anniversary of launch. Voyager 2 has only gotten further away since then, leaving our solar system behind at a speed of 34,000 miles per hour. Voyager 2 breached the boundary between our solar system and interstellar space in 2018, more than 41 years after its launch. Voyager continues its decades-long expedition into the vast, uncharted parts of the cosmos, even though there are no more planets for it to examine. But what about the Voyager's discoveries along the way? Which one is most likely to reach the farthest point of the universe? And what is that strange humming noise? Curious to know about these? Hello everyone, welcome back to another informative and adventurous episode. Today we are going to discuss Voyager spacecraft's terrifying new discovery in space. So without any further ado, let's get into the business. Just a reminder about our new giveaway. We're giving away the new iPad Pro or the new iMac Pro. The choice is yours. All you have to do is watch the full video, leave a like, comment the keyword hidden in the video and make sure you're subscribed. It's that simple. Right off the bat, let's have a little brief about the journey of the Voyager twins. The Voyager program is a long-running American science project that consists of two robotic interstellar probes, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. They were launched in 1977 to take advantage of Jupiter and Saturn's favorable alignment and travel close to them while gathering data for transmission back to Earth. Following the launch, it was decided to send Voyager 2 towards Uranus and Neptune to collect data for transmission back to Earth. The two Voyager spacecraft are still in operation beyond the heliosphere's outer edge in interstellar space as of 2021. They're both still collecting and transmitting important information to Earth. Voyager surprised everyone by doing things no one expected, discovering scenes no one expected, and promising to outlast its creators. It has taken on a life of its own, a destiny beyond the reach of its keepers, much like a magnificent picture or an enduring institution. As of April 24th, 2021, Voyager 1 was moving at a speed of 61,045 km per hour relative to the Sun and it was 22,676 hundred-thousand kilometers from the Sun, putting it at a distance of 22.8 billion kilometers from Earth. Voyager 1 entered interstellar space on August 25th, 2012. According to data, as of April 24th, 2021, Voyager 2 was traveling at a speed of 55,150 kilometers per hour relative to the Sun and was 18.9 billion kilometers from the Sun putting it at a distance of 19.0 billion kilometers from Earth. Data from Voyager 2 revealed that it has likewise crossed interstellar space on November 5, 2019. On November 4, 2019, scientists announced that the Voyager 2 probe had entered the interstellar medium, ISM, which is a region of space beyond the influence of the solar wind on November 5th, 2018, and had now joined the Voyager 1 probe, which had reached the ISM earlier in 2012. Despite having traveled beyond the solar wind's impact, the Voyagers still have a long way to go before leaving the solar system. The Voyager's cameras, magnetometers, and other devices obtained data and photos that revealed previously unknown characteristics about each of the four massive planets and their moons. The spacecraft's close-up photographs revealed Jupiter's varied cloud shapes, winds and storm systems, as well as volcanic activity on its moon Io. Saturn's rings were discovered to feature perplexing braids, kinks and spokes, as well as a plethora of ringlets. Voyager 2 discovered a large magnetic field around Uranus, as well as 10 additional moons. It discovered three rings and six previously undiscovered moons, as well as a planetary magnetic field and complex. Widely scattered auroras during its flyby of Neptune, Voyager 2 is the only spacecraft that has visited Uranus and Neptune as of 2021. NASA confirmed the existence of a hydrogen wall at the solar system's outskirts in August 2018. Based on data from the New Horizons mission, the hydrogen wall was first spotted in 1992 by the two Voyager satellites. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration NASA, funded the construction of the Voyager spacecraft at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, as well as their launches from Cape Canaveral, Florida, tracking and everything else related to the probes. 
The original program cost $865 million, with an extra $30 million for the later added Voyager interstellar mission. While Voyager 2 is now approximately 20 billion miles away from Earth, more than 200 times the Earth's sun distance. However, because they're traveling in opposite directions, they're now farther apart than they are from Earth. As mentioned earlier, both probes are still active after four decades, and they send new data back to Earth for examination regularly. The power supply is the prime factor to Voyager's extended life. Each probe has three radioisotope, thermoelectric generators, or RTGS, which contain a small quantity of plutonium and transform the heat of radioactive decay into a useful electric current to power the spacecraft's equipment. The plutonium fuel employed in both of the Voyager spacecraft has a half-life of over 90 years, making it perfect for supplying energy for an extended period. The fact that the Voyagers have lasted so long has proven important to astronomy. Without these two probes, we would have never had the opportunity to investigate the unknown beyond our solar system for such a long time. The heliosphere is a massive cosmic bubble that surrounds our sun. The helioballs are the edges of the heliosphere, where the solar wind collides with the surrounding interstellar medium before the launch of the Voyagers and are packed with plasma from the sun's solar wind. One of the most important concerns in astronomy was the nature of the heliosphere. Astronomers had no idea how big it was, and some speculated that the heliopause could be as close as Jupiter's orbit. However, as Voyager 2 sped through Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and eventually Neptune, it became evident that the edge of the heliosphere was much farther away. And no one knew when or if Voyager would reach it before it ceased working. However, in 2012, Voyager 1 began to notice a decrease in the solar wind and a large increase in particle density around it, indicating that it had crossed the barrier into interstellar space. After noticing the same indicators a few years later, Voyager 2 crossed helioballs for the first time in 2018. Both satellites were able to determine that the limit of helioballs is 120 astronomical units away from the Sun, or 120 times farther than the Earth is from the Sun. However, many astronomers were startled that both Voyager 1 and 2 crossed helioballs at around the same distance. Solar activity flares and sunspots develop and decrease in a predictable pattern over an 11-year cycle on the Sun. The solar wind would apply more pressure on the heliosphere during the peak of a solar cycle, causing it to inflate like a balloon, then deflate during the quiet sections of the cycle. According to astronomers, between 2012 and 2018, the Sun's activity rose, as a result, when Voyager 2 measured the heliosphere, it should have been significantly greater than when Voyager 1 did. However, because the twin probes reported roughly identical distances, the heliosphere appears to be far more durable than previously imagined. The cause for this is due to the interstellar medium. The space between stars is surrounded by a small but detectable magnetic field. Voyager will measure the interstellar magnetic field around seven tiny cores and compare it to Earth's magnetosphere, which is 64,000 times weaker. Still at 7 microjoules, it's roughly twice as powerful as astronomers had projected. The very high interstellar magnetic field exerts enough pressure on the heliosphere to maintain its size across the solar cycle. Voyager 2 discovered even more startling discoveries as it traveled through interstellar space. Last year, the probe's plasma wave research sensors revealed that the density of the interstellar medium is increasing as it goes further away from the Sun, with a distance of roughly 20 astronomical units already covered. The particle density of the surrounding space has increased by more than a factor of two, according to Voyager. The sudden and unexplained steep density gradients are both surprising and puzzling. According to one scenario, as interstellar particles approach helioballs, the Voyagers slow down. As a result, they begin to pile up like traffic, and Voyager is only now starting to travel through this congested area. Another idea is that as the interstellar magnetic field collides with the Sun's heliosphere, the magnetic field lines compress forcing ionized particles away and creating a relatively depleted zone between the heliosphere and the remainder of the interstellar medium. As the Voyager probes go deeper into the space and measure the density of the interstellar medium, it may be possible to determine which of these hypotheses is correct, or a mix of the two. Unfortunately, we may never receive a response. The Voyager's plutonium power sources are progressively deteriorating over time, and it's unclear how much longer they'll be able to function. But before Voyager goes silent for good, it will continue to collect new data from the frontiers of space exploration. It made another strange discovery earlier this year, a faint humming sound coming from the intergalactic space. Vibrations can be conveyed through the thin plasma of outer space in the same way that sound waves are carried by particles in the air. 
Even with Voyager's sensitive antennas, the sound would be far too weak for your ears to perceive because the interstellar mediums contain only a few particles per cubic centimeter. Astronomers have finally heard this unusual noise after a few years of waiting. Voyager 1 detected a series of relatively loud, high-pitched whistles immediately after passing past Helios Pores. These noise bursts lasted barely a fraction of a second, like a shockwave passing through the thin interstellar plasma B cell, and were related to the sun's abrupt explosion of activity, which sends ripples through space like a stone dropped in a fog. Because of the timing of these outbursts, astronomers were able to gain a better measurement of the interstellar medium than ever before. However, they only provided a brief glimpse into what is going on and only illustrate the consequences of sporadic solar outbursts. What astronomers are willing to know is what happens in the interstellar medium in between those signals. With a continuous measurement of the medium, they'd be able to gain a clearer picture of its true density and how it fluctuates over time. In May 2021, a Cornell University team discovered what they were looking for. The astronomers were able to isolate a new sail, a long continuous resonating around the 3 GHz band stellar by shifting through data from Voyager 1's plasma wave signs and satellites. If we could hear this, it would sound like a single steady note played constantly, but changing very slightly over time, according to a leading member of the Cornell team. We no longer had to rely on a chance occurrence to obtain a density measurement. We can now nearly continuously measure density. This recently discovered interstellar noise is significant and represents a significant step forward in our understanding of the nature of the void beyond our solar system. Astronomers will be able to better understand the interactions between the Sun's magnetic field and the interstellar one by using continuous readings from Voyager and what occurs when the solar wind collides with the interstellar plasma. The Milky Way's interstellar region is still one of astronomy's largest and most fascinating mysteries. Some of those questions may be answered by Voyager 1 and 2, but they may only be operating for a few more years, and they're not sure how much more science they'll be able to finish. Some questions may remain unexplained, at least until another probe is launched on a decade-long journey into the interstellar realm. Having said that, this concludes today's episode. Hope you guys liked the video. Let us know your views about this in the comments. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more episodes like this, and ring the notification bell to stay updated with our channel. Also, leave a like for the video to show your support. That's what keeps us growing. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode. Peace.